Thank you. Thanks, Natasha. Um, hi. So, um, uh, the, the topic today is moonmars.com. This is a website that uh, I've recently launched. Um, uh, worked very hard to get it online before the conference, uh, but it's actually been uh, the idea has been there for 13 years, and I've been sort of steadily developing it in the background. Um, I'm from Australia. I'm from Mars Society Australia, but I've been involved in a bunch of groups over the years. Um, I've been on the board of directors of the Moon Society been involved with Space Renaissance Initiative and Mars Drive and a, and a bunch of different groups. So uh, this is my fourth time coming to, to North America for an international conference. Um, last time was about six years ago in DC, so uh, I really love coming out here and I really appreciate that you guys uh, came today. So um, what is it? Well, the very simplest overview is uh, it, it's a collaboration and visualisation toolkit for space settlement. The intention is to get people from different countries and from different space groups and maybe different philosophies talking and cooperating and communicating about space settlement. It's what you might think of as a global open source space settlement movement. So the, the website is intended as a, as a software framework and architecture to support that kind of activity. It is at its core as a social network. Um, we're going to also have project management features, um, tools to support education and research, a virtual environment and uh, also probably a shop. So if you can imagine Facebook plus Basecamp plus Stack Overflow, Overflow plus uh, Second Life in space. Um, I'll give you a quick rundown of the history. I'll go through this uh, reasonably fast. I, I got inspired about uh, space settlement when I first read Red Mars in 99. And I thought, well, as a computer scientist, what can I do about this? And I was really into an, in virtual reality and, um, and the web. And I thought, well, what if we put a model of Mars online and we sort of did space settlement on, online in virtual reality and that was, that was sort of the sort of the seed of the idea and I, I had a project called Virtual Mars Online for a while which more described it than anything and then I became involved in the Republic of Mars which was an online sort of micro nation about 10 years ago and we role played uh, living on Mars in the future but it had no rules and it had no, uh, no graphics so that was something that I thought was needed and that kind of added to the idea. Um, and then of course since then we've had a social networking revolution um, now we've got a bunch of new technologies that actually make virtual reality in the browser possible, which it hasn't really been possible before. You've always needed to use uh, uh, external software, but now we can do it. And the culmination of all these things sort of led to moonmars.com and I, I found this great domain name, really expressed what I wanted to do and I, I talked to a bunch of people in the different groups that I was in and everyone was sort of behind the idea so I started building it. Um, the goals, the overriding goal, of course, is to build bases on the Moon and Mars. Okay, that's the that's the purpose of the site. That's why it exists. Um, the the purpose of the site itself is is really a dedicated social network for the space community. But rather than being focused on social, it's more oriented towards research and development. Um, we practice space settlement and virtual reality. We develop missions and plans as a community, collect information, data, and ideas uh, so that they can be discovered by other people, and it's all sort of collected in one place. We want to inspire people, of course, um, encourage enrolment in STEM education, which space is a great way to get young people interested in science, and we want to support uh, space events, projects, and startups. Our market is pretty simple space enthusiast groups like this one, uh, students, and entrepreneurs. Uh, the social network. So this is the, the first feature that I'm really focusing on, mainly because it's easier to build in a virtual environment. Um, why bother? Why would you reinvent a social network when there are so many? Well, actually, niche social networking is sort of the recent trend in social networks. Not everyone wants to use general purpose social networks like, uh, like Facebook and LinkedIn. They want to be among their peers. So this is, that's the number one reason. We want a social network that's just about space. Um, there's obviously a lot of lessons that have been learned during the social networking revolution. Um, we can do some things better now. Um, we have better technology. We can build a legacy-free network. It doesn't have to uh, support people's uh, um, habits or addictions to sort of certain features. Um, this particular one is not intended to be purely social but actually creative. And of course, the main point of difference is the virtual reality, which most social networks don't have. Some do, but not, not many. Um, one difference is that 
in, in moonmars.com, everyone is friends, okay? So there's no friend requests. One thing that we find in the space community, in social networking, is that everyone adds each other. If you're in space, you just it's, tend to add everyone else who's in space. It's just something that happens. So we decided to skip over that. Um, but we have follow relationships like, tw like Twitter has, so that you can sort of track the, the information that other people are posting that you're specifically interested in. Um, we have an anonymous rating system, unlike Facebook, and this um, is a way of scoring content. And this way we can get a feel for what content is really the best content, and it also functions as a content moderation system, like a, a self-moderating community. Mm -hmm. So it goes from minus two to plus two. So minus two is really bad, it's like a warning. Minus one is dislike, zero is neutral, one is like, and, and plus two is, uh, is really like. So um, anything that drops below about minus 10 just gets removed. So if something, someone posts something offensive, it, it'll get removed by the community, which removes the, you know, the need for moderators and that sort of thing. But the stuff that gets r ranked really high will get featured on the homepage, so it will be very easy to discover the best quality content that's being produced by the community. Um, the central feature right now is groups and really building uh, around groups. Um, this is something obviously that, that Twitter doesn't have. Um, the main types of groups are research groups and societies, like this is a society group. We also have support for companies, academic groups and government. Um, coming soon is events, so we'll, we'll be able to create an event like something like the Mars Society Conference and people will be able to indicate that they're attending and, and so forth. Um, but not only just the normal reminders that you'd expect, but also some event management tools for people who are setting these kind of events up. That's to help people who you know, may not have access to software tools uh, for setting up events. And a major point of difference is uh, projects. So I'll give you a quick look at, um, at uh, the social network as it is so far. It's really pretty new. There's not a whole lot of features there yet. So we have uh, a news page on the front. Uh, everything sort of runs in channels. So channels are really just sequences of items with comments, obviously copied from Facebook. You know, when something works, there's no point uh, trying to do it different. So you, you post uh, an item and people can comment on it. So quite straightforward uh, concept. Um, you, you have information attached to your username, which might be your, your name, your uh, um, age and gender and your country. So people can uh, discover other people that they, they may have a connection to. Um, a member profile, fairly simple. You have your own channel, just like on Facebook, and all your basic information, such as where you live. We have a choice of are you a moon person or a Mars person, or are you both? Um, uh, all your social networking links. So we integrate with the other social networking uh, sites and tools that are out there. So you can sort of click to Skype chat someone or go straight to their, their Twitter or their LinkedIn page or whatever. Um, you can see their followers and who they're following and, and their groups and whatnot. Um, the groups page, fairly simple right now. You can filter by the types of groups, uh, most, as I was saying, mostly research and society groups at the moment. So research groups, is that loading? Yes. So we have things like um, metals, biology, bricks and glass, cement and concrete, so a lot of ISRU groups, energy, uh, food. Um, you might notice that there's not uh, groups for mining metals on the moon and mining metals on Mars. We're doing what I've done is I've deliberately combined the people who may be interested in the moon and Mars into one group. That's done for a reason to to get um, that cross communication because there is a lot of synergy and overlap there which we're trying to leverage. You may have realised already that part of the reason for this group is to get the moon people and the Mars people talking to each other because there's a little bit of bipartisan or, you know, I'm in this camp, you're in that camp sort of philosophy, which I've never been like that. I've always been involved in both Moon and Mars uh, groups. And I think that they are so similar and there's so much opportunity for overlap and cooperation. If we can get everyone communicating, uh, we'll get a better result and we'll get it faster. If we have a quick look at um, society groups, we've got things, you know, the Mars Society, Mars Society Australia, Moon Society, but most of the major groups are, are, currently, uh, are, are currently represented and of course we'll, we'll add new ones over time. Uh, members, I will be adding a member search form fairly soon right now. We just have a list because the, the membership is uh, not massive yet, but it's only been online a week, so. All right, let me just go back, couple of slides. All right. 
Okay, so I mentioned projects. Projects I foresee as being a very important point of difference. Um, we'll have a number of different project types, going from something as simple as uh, creating a document uh, to, to actually designing Mars missions or moon missions, uh, to designing a settlement uh, or, or even a complete space program. The idea is that a big project can be split into sub-projects. So in this way we can take a big project like building a base on Mars and split it into smaller projects that might be a bit more manageable. And people can self-select as to what projects they want to be involved in. So we'll have subsystems within a settlement, for example, and people might just work on that part of it. And then we'll have a systems integration project which sort of puts all those subsystems together and, and you know, hopefully make that into a business plan that might work. Um, so projects will have support for tasks, roles, schedules, resources. Um, tasks will be promoted on the front page of the site or they'll be searchable. So members of the community who want to get involved in space projects can simply scan through what, what is being advertised for, what's being asked for right now, and then they can start to get involved in uh, projects on the site. Now the most, the key point of difference is of course the virtual environment. This is a really ambitious part. We're going to build the, virtual, the biggest virtual environment that's ever been built. Um, which is going to contain a model of the whole solar system. Um, fortunately, we have the computing resources these days to do it, so we may as well do it. Um, we're going to have most of the objects in the solar system will be modelled fairly simply, but we'll have very detailed, accurate topographical models of the Moon and Mars, and it'll be possible to walk around the surface of the Moon and Mars and have a, quite a realistic view of what you would expect to experience. That's a major design goal of the project. Um, into the virtual environment, we'll add models of settlements. So settlements that have already been designed, we'll put those in there, and new ones that the community creates, we'll put those in there as well. And the intention, of course, is to get some insight into which sort of settlement designs work, which rover designs work, which spacesuit designs work. So we model these in 3D. This is a very common approach in architecture. You can explore a building in virtual reality and get some um, insights into whether the design is, is effective. Um, we're aiming for realism. It'll start out simple, but over time, as we, you know, get more resources, we'll try and make it as realistic as possible, up to up to full immersive VR. So, just a couple of examples. I, I wanted to make sure there was at least some pictures in my presentation. Um, this is a big uh, moon base ba made with Bigelow modules. This is moon base Alpha from Space 1999. So, these are examples of what we might uh, build. Um, these are some Mars-based designs that already exist. The Mars Homestead, the uh, Mars Foundation has already produced a, a design for a plain settlement and a hillside settlement. This is a Mars Direct style uh, hab, and this of course is the Mars One model. So we're going to do these in 3D, and it'll be like exploring them as if you're there. Um, we've actually, I've, I've come in contact with a guy called Evan Newman, who's already built a virtual environment that runs in the browser. and. Uh, we're looking at like working together. So I just thought I'd show you this. So far it has, uh, I might have to reload this, I usually do. Um, so far it has the Sun, the Moon, um, Earth, and um, the ISS in it, and a couple of other models. But this runs in a browser, which is pretty cool. You don't need any additional software to, um, to view this. Can you manipulate? Not as yet, no. At the moment, it, it's, it's designed for space mission simulation, so he's working with guys doing CubeSat missions and that sort of thing, and they're sending real-time telemetry data back so they can actually monitor the CubeSat in virtual reality. But it, it applies very well to this sort of thing that I'm doing. Um, it's a reusable engine, of course, so. Um, the additions would be we put the topographical data of the moon, uh, add that to the model, then we add Mars and its topographical data, and you know, you know, ideally we'd have all the, the planets in the solar system and they'd be modelled in the correct locations. Um, I'll hurry through because I think we're running a bit short of time. A um, bit of a comparison with Second Life. It is most probably more like Second Life than anything else you could compare it to. Um, it'll have avatars, objects, settlements, currency, scripting behaviours, but unlike Second Life, it's going to be scientifically realistic. That is the main difference. The setting is the solar system. It's, uh, it's 3D in, sen in the sense that you're walking around on spheres instead of uh, on flat surfaces. Um, gravity will be realistic, atmosphere, sky, um, sun and light, uh, uh, light and day uh, will be different. Well, sorry, will be realistic. Uh, weather, terrain, this will all be modelled as realistically as possible. 
uh, spacesuits. If you want to go outside the settlement, you need to put on a spacesuit, all right? Because we want people to feel like they're on Mars or, or the moon. Um, so these are some of the actions that you'll be able to do in the virtual environment. Walk around and explore the surface in a spacesuit. Explore inside settlements without one. Um, drive around in rovers, build bases. This will be, uh, we'll have base building uh, projects, so you can purchase components like greenhouses and nuclear reactors and solar panels and things like that, and assemble them together into your own bases, and people can then um, explore those. Um, the idea is, of course, to gain insight. Um, we have a virtual currency inside the virtual environment. It is intended to be a role-playing game, although not a very uh, strict one. You don't sort of have to be in character or something like that. Um, but we'll have a virtual currency inside the game so that uh, um, people can participate in an economic way, similar to Second Life. So not, not a combat game like World of Warcraft, but an economic game. So you can, you can buy and sell, you can start a business, you could uh, set up a mine to mine water on the moon and sell it to someone, another player who's built a base uh, nearby, those sorts of things. Um, just some of the additional features that we might build into the site. Um, depending on, on what, what people want. is a shop with moonmars.com swag and, and other items that people in the space community would like, like telescopes and uh, books and magazines and so on. We'll have an Ask an Expert feature. This has already started. All we've got right now is a discussion group where people can ask questions and other people can answer them. And combined with the rating system, that will help to identify the best answers to questions. So the intention here is really to get students and young people who are interested in space connecting with those of us who are a bit more experienced and able to answer their questions. Um, we want to collect a library of scientific papers and uh, other resources. Um, integration with some of the space wiki wikis that are available, rather than recreate that kind of thing ourselves, we'll just use the resources that are there and hopefully build on them. And uh, a space jobs board, of course, if you're going. The, the intention is to build the largest online group of space people. So it's a really good place to, for startups and other businesses to recruit, or, or if you're looking for a job, to sort of host that. OK, I think we're nearly out of time. I thought I'd have a sort of, I've got a couple of t-shirts to give away. So I thought I'd have a couple of Mars trivia questions um, before we have questions. So um, this is for a large t-shirt. Which large shield volcano sits on the Martian equator? Does anyone know that who wants a large t-shirt? No? Does anyone know? Goodness me. Pavonis Mons, who wants a large t-shirt? <laughs> All right, someone must know this one. Which gas comprises about 3% of the Martian atmosphere? For a medium T-shirt? Nitrogen. Nitrogen. Argon's about 2%. I've got some cards up here as well. You're welcome to grab them. That's the end of the presentation. If you have any questions, uh, please ask. Thank you. Ten minutes. All right. I, I went through that fast because I was worried about running out of time. So... Um, Maybe anyone have any questions about the project? Yeah. I think it's a good idea. Um, I particularly like the fact uh, that we got moon and Mars people talking to each other, or that's the idea behind it. Um, in fact, um, I'm also in the same situation where I don't know why they're fighting. <laughs> they should be cooperating. And so, um, and I'd like to talk to you about it. Thanks. I've, I find this topic coming up a lot, and I'm t I find myself talking about it a lot to both moon people and Mars people. And I was on uh, an online radio program um, a couple of months ago and uh, talking about why Mars is the prize and Mars is the new world and we need to go to Mars, but why it makes actually really a lot of sense to go to the moon first. And there are a lot of reasons, apart from the fact um, that the moon is good preparation for Mars, which a lot of Mars people may dispute, there's actually a lot of really interesting lunar science that can be only done on the moon. And uh, the moon is going to be the best place for tourism and business. And you need business. I'm f sort of 
involved in the new space community as well. And um, it's the space industry that's going to take us to Mars. And the moon is a stepping stone as part of the space industry. After orbit, people, are, uh, tourists are going to want to go to the moon. They're not going to want to go on a six month trip to Mars. So it's a logical, from a business perspective, it's a logical stepping stone. But it also makes sense from an engineering perspective. Uh, so. Does anyone have a, any more questions? Uh, just, just wondering about how you, um, you know, everything costs money and uh, yes. how you're going to finance the growth. Well, um, I've been networking as much as I can. At the New Space Conference, I was uh, talking to a lot of business people, trying to raise money, tr telling them what I want to do. Um, yes, it's my goal to make this my job. Uh, what I would love is to hire a team of six guys and so I can focus on content because at the moment I'm doing content, I'm doing coding, I'm doing everything and, uh, you know, I've got to go back to work uh, pretty soon, so it becomes harder and harder to develop it. But still, I can still do a lot by myself if I have to, but I'm, I am trying to find uh, funding sources, yes. And, and this, this has potential to make a lot of money. As anyone interested in social networking knows, social network, networks are big dollars. And if you've got a social network that is all about space, there's tremendous potential for business opportunities and networking and all that sort of thing. So. <coughs> would, would I be able to mention the word Titan? Yes, that's right, yes. Um, it is meant to be general solar system. However, um, the Moon and Mars are obviously the main focus for space settlement. But yes, the discussion is meant to include orbital settlements, uh, asteroid mining, Titan, Ganymede, all those sorts of things. So, what was your question? Uh, is it open for us? Yes, it will be, yes. <coughs> no. No, this, this is a sort of a, a question that's been thrown around with, between me and some other potential developers. They want to make it open source and I'm sort of half interested in that. If, you get, if I get DC funding or angel investor funding for this project, they may not want it to be open source. So I'm reluctant to release the code into the wild until I know one way or another whether that's going to be a pathway. But if it is open source, obviously I can engage a lot more developers and I think that the, specifically the virtual environment component will, will develop a lot faster and will be a lot better. So I'd like to do it, but I have to make sure that it's the best idea. Sorry? Can you make a modular so you could open source the module to keep your core IP? That's a good idea. It's based on Drupal 7 right now, which is a modular architecture. Is there another question up there? Yep. Well, I hadn't really given that a lot of thought, but thanks for making me aware of it. Um, the, the, the immediate... I yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, I would like... To, I'm a bit of an perhaps altruistic-minded uh, person, and I would like to think the space community is above that. Uh, but, uh, of course, you know, um, you've got to have precautions in place. I, I suspect the best way to do it... Um, within the virtual environment at least, is have perhaps young person only areas or young person only times um, when they can use it. If you wanted to, to have that, uh, especially if you're running a classroom, you might want to have an excursion to a part of the moon and just have that restricted to your class or something like that. But that's something, thanks for making me uh, think about that. So this seems to me like a perfect combination between reality and fantasy kind of? Yes. Like Yes, Can it's. You say something about what you intend to have, like a 50-50 balance, or just let the community take off however they go. It's people will self-select as to what degree they role-play. So the the virtual environment will be set 50 years in the future. So it's 50 years in the future. We're building bases on the moon and Mars, but that doesn't mean you've got to pretend that you're a different person 50 years in the future. So we won't have alternate alter egos or something like that. Um, so people can do whatever they want in that regard. Um, yeah, like, I mean, like, where, where you're integrating all, like, planetary society and natural space society and that, like, the real world events. Yes. One part of the website, but then you have another component of the website where you have virtual worlds. Yes. It's like, how do you see the two of those types of real world things happening in a... In a, in a, in a I event? see the main... Um, distinction there being between the social network and the virtual environment. So the social network is real time, um, the virtual environment is 50 years in the future. So that's, I guess that's where the, that, that difference is. Yeah, that's where the events and so forth will be set up.
Is that time? Well, unless we have one more question, we can probably take one more if there's any. Yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, we're using data from JPL, and what they do, uh, there's a, a department within JPL that does this. They get all the data from like LCROSS and LRC and all the different missions, and they combine them to get the best possible topographical and colour models and thermal models and that kind of thing. So, and that's all available as a web service. It's a free web service, which is awesome. And I, I suspect most people don't know that this information is, is there and it's free. But uh, we will be using that data um, to, to build the model. And of course, as that data gets better, our model gets better. And you know, we, as we get more, more funding, more momentum, more people, we will get more com better computers, computer technology will get better, our simulation will improve over time. Yeah. So it'll start simple and hopefully become very realistic. That's the goal. Thanks, everyone. I really appreciate that you came. Thank you very much. <laughs>